Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Henry and I'm back for my second live with Stigma Free Society. Now this week we've put our disclaimer inside the uh, video description. So please take a moment to review that. Overall, we just wanna look out for you and your safety. So if you need any help, please call and reach out to our first responders. Also, I wanted to remind you um, that this live event is part of the new Stigma Free Society COVID Youth Wellness Toolkit. So you can check out our website at stigmafreetoolkit.com to access it. And it's an educational resource for youth, parents, and educators to help youth maintain their mental well being during COVID 19 and to provide tools on how to do this from home. As a school counselor, I found this resource really helpful in showing the videos to my students as well. So it's a great resource for counselors too. On the website, you'll also find activity ideas, downloadable resources, inspiring stories, and tips for having conversation about mental health and much more. We're putting on these live events to interact with you and to provide more knowledge and strategies to help during this difficult time. So please, add a, if at any time you have any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment tab. So this week I wanted to focus on self-care. So I wanted to start off by getting you to post maybe a few of the things that you've been doing to take care of yourself during COVID-19. I know for myself, I have been trying to take nature walks, I've been trying to exercise and do some yoga live videos and um, also just to take some time, have a calm, quiet bath, read a book. So what are some things that you've been doing to take care of yourself? Or what does self-care mean to you? I'd love to hear. Um, so the topic of self-care, what I consider it to be is just making sure we're taking time for ourselves to relax and do the things that we enjoy. I think self-care is really important right now with COVID-19 because the changes to our routines may be weighing on our mental wellness. It's also a good time to slow down and think about our mental wellness routines and how to best take care of ourselves. Um, there are some many different definitions for self-care. A common one is the practice of taking action to persevere or improve on one's own health and wellness. So in my research, I looked through a couple different resources on self-care and how to explain self-care to you today and how to make it engaging and kind of fun. So I was hoping that everybody could have a pencil and paper, paper ready for once I'm done talking a bit about self-care so that we all can make a self-care wheel together and use that as kind of something to work towards or some different ideas of how we can take care of ourselves. Uh, so one resource I came across was self-care split into six different categories. So I was gonna go over each category with you before we do our self-care wheel, uh, so that we can get some ideas of how we can take care of ourselves and how we can balance. That's what I really liked about the wheel, is as a circle together, we can balance each area of self-care. So the first area of self-care I came across was physical self-care. And of course, that's taking care of our bodies. And it doesn't have to be extremely difficult workout routine. Uh, it's important that we just do something that we really enjoy, that our bodies enjoy, that we're really passionate about. So we don't want it to feel like an obligation necessarily. So for me, I love yoga because it's kind of a slower practice. And it really allows us to kind of be calm and take deep breaths and kind of ground ourselves. So that's one example of taking care of our physical self-care. Another idea might be dancing. Do a dance party. Have some fun. Uh, you can do that on Zoom right now with your friends, and that would be a lot of fun. Or do a workout video with your friends on Zoom, which I've also tried. Uh, going for a bike ride. That's another way we can take care of our physical self-care. Yes, dancing with our kids. So fun. Um, I've done dance as well as yoga at school with kids and it's so much fun to engage them and just take a break from school and take a breather for ourselves. So that's wonderful. Glad to hear that. Uh, emotional self-care is another type and it's being in tune with our emotions, checking in with ourselves, being mindful of any triggers we might have or any unhelpful thinking patterns, finding ways to work through them instead of letting them bottle up inside. So one helpful example that I give to my students is a pop bottle. 
So what happens when we shake a fizzy pop bottle? What happens is there's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on the outside of that pop bottle. So that's almost like our body. When we put a lot of stress and we don't take time for ourselves, that's like our body, all that pressure, all that stress. So, and when we try and screw the lid once we've shaken that pop bottle, oh my goodness, it explodes and fizzes up everywhere. So we don't want our body to be that way. We wanna take care of ourselves. So um, yeah, we wanna take care of ourselves and our emotions. Some ideas to take care of our emotional self-care, our journaling, doing some mindful meditations, being creative through painting emotions, maybe even writing poetry or song lyrics or cooking. Another type of self-care is our personal self-care. So learning who we are as a person and what we value, what we want in life. That might involve planning short-term and long-term goals. So some ways of doing this and taking care of our personal self-care might be creating a vision board for ourselves, um, a collage, an electronic version might be using the um, app Pinterest and doing a visual board there of our dreams and aspirations. We could also make a list of things we want to accomplish during the quarantine. That's something that I started to do at the beginning and I've checked a lot of things off my list and it feels good to check things off of a list and know that we've accomplished some of those personal goals. So the fourth type of self-care is spiritual. Now this doesn't necessarily have to relate to religion. So by practicing spiritual self-care, we're nourishing our soul and we're striving for inner peace and seeking purpose and meaning in our lives. Some ideas might be meditation, spending some time in nature, donating money to an organization that's meaningful to you. Intellectual self-care is the fourth type. So that's doing something we enjoy and using our minds. And it helps us expand our knowledge. So that might mean learning a new skill, something like knitting or sewing, maybe even changing oil in your own car, woodworking. I have lots of friends building tables and all kinds of things. It's amazing. Or even planter gardening boxes. So cool. So those are some different ways to engage our intellectual self-care or just taking the time to read a book, learning a new language, or even watching a cool documentary on Netflix. There's so many coming out right now that could definitely spark our intellectual and our intellectual self-care. The fifth type of self-care is social. We're social beings. And at this tough time with COVID-19, introverts and extroverts may differ in their level of comfort in social situations. But connection's important to us all. So some ideas for COVID-19 to take care of our social self-care would be video chatting, online games. I've been playing this one called Words with Friends. And it's kind of fun to do with your family members and friends. And you each build off each other's words, kind of like categories or uh, Scrabble. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So that could be a way to connect with people, uh, video dance parties, messaging old friends that we haven't heard from for a long time or even using the phone, make a quick phone call to those friends. The last type of self-care I came across was sensory. So that involves nourishing our senses. So our senses are, of course, sight, touch, sound, taste, and smell. So this helps us ground to the present moment and reduce our stress. So there's lots of different ideas of how to engage our senses. Some of my favorites are getting a new scented candle, and just enjoying the new smell. Essential oils like lavender helps calm us. Soothing music, walking barefoot in the grass. When's the last time you did that? Probably not since you were a kid. So just doing little things like that, cooking a new recipe, looking at the clouds pass while you're lying relaxing outside, using putty or a stress ball, spending time um, brushing your dog or cat or having a hot bath. So those are all great ways to engage our senses. So at this time, now that I've gone over some of that theory stuff about self-care and the different types, I want to open it up to some questions around self-care. If anybody had any questions about um, self-care, and then we can get started on our wheel.
one question I was thinking you might have, well, you're think if you're thinking of a question, is, well, why is self-care important to youth and teens anyways? Isn't that just for adults? Isn't it just for, for counselors or helping professionals? And my answer to that would be no. Like, youth and teens face stressors in their lives too. It's just a bit different. And um, youth and teens, a lot of it's to do with their friends, I notice as a school counselor. Stress around stuff going on with their friends, or right now, the stress of changing to online learning and having all these online assignments for their teachers. That can be really overwhelming and stressful. And just not being able to talk to their friends face to face right now is also another reason why we should be focusing on our self care. I see over here, online games, didn't even think of that. Yeah, online games are a good way to connect for sure. Stress balls help my child greatly. That's wonderful. Um, something I do in my counseling office is I have a box of different sensory tools so that kids can use them to help calm down. So I have stress balls, I have like a glitter wand, um, glitter bottles that I've made with students, all kinds of different tools, putty and slime and just sensory things to help us calm down and engage our senses. I uh, see so I have a question here. Any tips for anxiety in children to help them in the moment? My favorite is 54321 grounding. Now, there's many different ways that you can do that. Um, it depends on which order of the senses you want to do. Uh, you could do five things that you see. So, right in that moment when they're having that anxiety kind of panic attack, you want to look and list five things that you can see. So, in my house right now, I see a picture on the wall, I see a table, I see a chair. I see dishes sitting around, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and I see a pillow. So that's five things that I see. The next you wanna go across is four things that you could touch. So right now I could touch the smoothness of my table. I could touch my hair, it feels soft. I could touch my sweater. And I could touch my cheeks. They're feeling a little bit rosy because I'm a little bit nervous, but that's okay. And the next one would be three things that we could hear. Right now it's pretty quiet in my townhouse complex, so I don't hear too much. But if you listen real carefully, you might hear some birds singing. You might hear some kids playing outside. Um, you also might just hear kind of like the sound of the TV when the TV's turned on or when it's warming up. I don't know, buzzing sound, sure. Um, so that could be for sound. And then you could do two things that you can smell. I put some lavender oil on before this live, so I can smell that. Uh, another thing I could smell is I did some cooking um, earlier for breakfast, so I still kind of smell that. And then the last bit of grounding is the one thing that you can taste. So likely the one thing that you can taste is probably the last thing that you had today. Um, I had this quinoa Mexican dish I made, I also had coffee this morning, so that might be something I can taste. The idea is behind grounding and 54321 grounding in the moment of anxiety is just to distract our brain from those things that are going on in our body and the anxiety. So just by being able to list um, 54321, all of our senses can really just bring us down. I see I have another question here. What are some warning signs that my child is about to become anxious? Great question. Um, so I know for myself and for the students I work with, Generally, our heart might be beating faster, so paying attention to our body. Our cheeks or our face might be feeling a little bit more warm. That would be a sign. Um, they might be not showing as much eye contact. They might be pacing back and forth. Other things, hmm. Um, they might be asking for reassurance. Where are we going? Or asking a lot of questions. What are we doing? What, why do we have to go there? So you might be able to tell in their tone of voice and the way they're asking the questions or even just their their facial features if they're making eye contact with you or not. I think those are some pretty good ones. Body might tense up a little bit too. So they might be holding their hands in a fist or they might be fiddling around with their fingers when they're feeling anxious. Those are some of the ones I notice with my students. So thank you for those questions. Y'all ready to make a self-care wheel? Because I am, we're gonna make a self-care wheel. All right, so what you need is a pencil and a paper and you need something that you can use to trace your circle. I have this, cal this candle lid or you can just sketch your circle. That's okay too, doesn't have to be a perfect circle. So we're gonna start there and we're going to trace around 
our lid or do a nice sketch. And as I mentioned before, this is a lot of what I like to do with my students. When I teach them a skill, I like to do it with them and do something that engages them. So a lot of art and that kind of thing. So I have my circle here for my wheel. Now, for the sake of ease, we're just going to divide our circle into four sections. Six sections seemed a little bit too much to me, and I want to just focus on four because they overlap a little bit as well, the four different types of self-care. So next step that I'd like you to do is just draw a line to split your circle in half and then in half again. So it should look like a pie with four, piece, four pieces. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna to switch to a pen because I want my titles to kind of stand out. But if you have colors or you like doodling, please feel free to do any of that and then everything will look great. Uh, whatever engages you the best or makes you feel more artistic, you can do it that way. So have some artistic freedom. All right, so we're gonna use the four different types of self-care. And the four that I thought were most important or the easiest ones we could list were physical. So at one section at the top, we're gonna write physical. And the second section is emotional self-care. So we can write emotional. The third section is going to be spiritual. So spiritual. And the last section is going to be intellectual. All right, so you should have your circle, should look something like this, physical, emotional, spiritual, and intellectual. Excuse my messy writing, didn't bring my teacher writing game today, that's okay. Nice sketch. So we're gonna think to ourselves. I know I talked a lot about theory and a lot of different ideas, but think to yourself, hmm, what do I already do to take care of my physical self-care? And what do I want to try? What's something I knew I might want to try during COVID-19 um, to help take care of my physical self-care? So some ideas. I did have some images I wanted to post in here um, with some different ideas as well. Um, but it was tough to do in the live. So that's okay. We can just brainstorm together. Feel free to put ideas into the comment box and I'll try and give you some ideas as well that I talked about for physical self-care. So remember that's about our bodies. So something I already do is yoga and I really enjoy that to take care of my physical self-care, to take care of my body. Some other ideas might be that I haven't really tried but I'd like to try. I used to dance. so. Dance is a great one, and I don't really do it that much anymore. So I'm thinking I might want to try for my self-care wheel um, some Zumba or some dance. So I'm going to write that down in mine. Something new and exciting. Ah, hygiene, showering regularly. Yep, that's a good one for right now for COVID-19, definitely. Because I think a lot of us are kind of forgetting about our daily routines. Maybe we used to shower daily or nightly in the morning. And then right now we're just hanging out in our lazy gear, hanging out on the couch, watching Netflix. So that is a good one, hygiene routine. So making sure we shower or have a nice bath daily is a great one for physical, especially for our youth and teens. Um, for video gaming all day, they might not get to the shower. So that could be a good one for physical self-care. Thanks so much. All right. Next one is emotional self-care. So I'm just writing three ideas. So we want to keep this simple, right? So I wrote yoga. I already do that one. I like to do that for my self-care, physical self-care. I wrote Zumba, which is dancing, and having a shower or bath, making sure we do regular hygiene is important. So for emotional self-care, remember back, I was talking a lot about emotional self-care. So that's taking care of our feelings, all right? So what are you going to do to take care of your feelings? Something that's worked for me in the past, um, through past experiences in counseling, is journaling. So I'm going to write journaling in there because I've been slacking on my journaling and I think that would really start to help me manage my emotions in COVID-19 again. So for emotional self-care, I'm going to write journaling. Something else I could do to take care of my emotions that I maybe haven't done in a while is affirmations. So affirmations are positive thoughts. So when we wake up in the morning, 
maybe I can find some kind of app for affirmations and find some of those positive, uh, positive thoughts. So I'm going to write affirmations under emotional self-care. Another way that I might be able to take care of my emotional self-care, hmm, maybe I'll spend some time, I have two cats, I'm going to cuddle with my cats more and just hang out with them. Sometimes I'm home alone, sometimes my partner's here. So I'm going to take some time to relax and get some emotional support for my animals. Emotional support cats. There we go. All right. So that is my third one under emotional self-care. Next is spiritual. So remember, spiritual does not have to be about religion necessarily, but if you are religious and that works for you, then totally you could add that to your self-care wheel. For myself, I'm going to focus on being spiritual by going on more nature walks and kind of slowing down and engaging my senses. So under spiritual, I'm going to write nature walks. Now, something else um, I could think of for spiritual might be meditation. I do do yoga, like I said, but I don't necessarily do those daily meditations. So I think that would be a way I could definitely improve my spiritual self-care is by incorporating a daily short meditation, maybe using an app. Another way I could think of for spiritual um, could be even just yoga that I already do, or even me working for Stigma Free is kind of an organization I love and I support. So that is a way that I'm taking care of my spiritual self-care. All right, so there is my section for spiritual. The last section I have here is intellectual. So that's engaging our minds. As I mentioned before, I've been playing a lot of word games to engage my mind. So maybe I can find a new word game. I really like words with friends, but maybe I can try a new word game. All right. Another way to take care of my intellectual self-care is I've kind of been slacking on reading. I do like to read. Um, sometimes I find more academic literature gets more exhausting. It makes me feel like I'm doing my master's all over again. So I want to find something to read that's a little bit more relaxing. So reading for pleasure. Let's call it that. Reading for pleasure, for fun. Not so much academic stuff. And the last one of how I'm going to take care of my intellectual self-care is I'm going to watch a documentary on Netflix. I'm going to have a look later on, and I'm going to see if I can find something to engage my mind, and that's interesting. There we go. So here's my self-care wheel all filled in. I'm going to write a nice title at the top, and I think after I might doodle a little bit, draw some little pictures color them in, and I'll probably post it on my counselor Instagram. So I urge you as well to post your self-care wheels. I want to see them. Show me your self-care goals and your self-care ideas, if you don't mind. And please tag me. And my Instagram handle I'll put in the comments after is the underscore passionate underscore counselor. And please tag me. I use the at symbol and I'd love to see your self-care wheels all decorated and colored up. That'd be awesome. So that's the self-care wheels. All right. I had a lot of fun doing that with you and I'm really hoping each week I can bring something new that we can do together. So I was going to also ask you for some of your questions, comments. Also was going to ask you, hey, what do you want to hear? What are some other things you want me to focus on? One I was thinking that might be helpful is positive affirmations. And I like to do a shield with my students. You draw a shield and write all those positive self-talk ideas of how you can keep yourself positive. Okay, so that might be one idea of a topic I could talk about next week. Or I was also thinking about control. And right now with COVID, it can be tough to really recognize what we control and what we can't control and what we can't control. So thinking of maybe making us bubble with you. So a self-care bubble, or not self-care bubble, sorry, a control bubble, and what we can control and what we can't control, and do a little visual there, and I thought that might be fun. So let me know what you think. Self-control bubble, or um, positive self-talk shield, and also I have a few minutes, about five minutes for questions here as well, so if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Let's have a look. 
A uh, school counselor for my nine-year-old, she can FaceTime to vent about her worries. One really great organization that's doing free counseling for um, students right now for free is Moving Forward Family Services. And I also did my practicum with Moving Forward. So I would definitely recommend um, you reach out to them for some support as well. They're really great. And I can post their information in the comments later on. All right. Any other questions? Do you find it helpful in your work as a counselor? Yes, I do. I've been having so much fun on Zoom with my students and I've been showing them the comic. And for each page, we kind of predict what we think is going to happen next. And we talk a bit about reframing. So in the comic, it shows the positive and the negative. And I love that I can talk to my students and tie it into CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and reframing those negative thoughts into positive thoughts. Any other questions? Can you have a topic on maintaining relationships like partners? Yes, I think that's a wonderful idea. And I think it's important right now as well, maintaining relationships with families. Like it can be really tough and straining right now with our family members and our siblings. And we're probably getting a little sick of each other being stuck around each other so often. Whereas normally we'd get to go to school, uh, kids will get to go to school and have that break from their parents. And parents will get that break from the kids when they get to go to work. So yes, I think that's a wonderful idea for a topic, relationships. Thank you for that idea. Uh, so yeah, like I mentioned, I might bring in some other things with pencil and paper. So if you're tuning into my lives, have a pencil and paper handy. I like to do things with you and with my students in my office. So I thought, why, why change that? We'll do the same kind of thing in my lives where you'll have something to take away and today was the self-care wheel. So if there's no other questions, thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to talking to you again next week with a new exciting topic where we will get to do some more things on paper. Oh, I see another quick question here. Uh, do you find your work on Zoom different than work face-to-face -face with students? How does this virtual work impact you? Yes, I certainly do find it a lot different. Um, I do find Zooms a lot better than, oh, it seems that my video is having a bit of trouble here. I hope you can still all hear me. Um, my work on Zoom is a lot harder because a face-to-face -face with students, you get more connection, but I do find it's a lot better than a phone call with students. So, um, Zoom, it's fun because you can screen share different skills and activities but um, face to face, you can really show more empathy and emotion with your students and more support. So Zoom is better than nothing right now though. So I'll take what I can get. Uh, do I have a routine? Any suggestions? My routine in the morning, I sleep until about eight, a little bit later than normal. And, um, oh, you can still see me. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> On my end, it shows a black screen. So it's very funny. Oh, well. Uh, so my routine right now, is I wake up around eight o'clock and I take my time, make my breakfast. I usually have a smoothie bowl, something healthy to get me going. And I have a cup of coffee and kind of take my time um, getting ready for my day. Then around 8.39, I check my emails and set up my meetings with students. And um, so I do those Zoom calls and meetings with my students. Uh, about around 11 o'clock, when I would generally have recess time with the other staff members, I try and do a workout. So today around 11 o'clock, I did a yoga workout and um, it was wonderful and took that break for myself. And I kind of combined it with my usual lunch break because my lunch break is usually 11.45 to kind of 12.15, 12.30-ish. Uh, so yeah, I combine that all in one and do a workout in between in the middle of my day. Then I have a shower, get ready, meet with a few more students, uh, check a few more emails. And then I decide if I want to, sometimes I'll do an outdoor workout, uh, like go for a walk outside somewhere. Um, sometimes I'll sit out in the yard in this comfy chair I have <laughs> and uh, just kind of chill there and read a book. And um, Or I'll bring my laptop outside and plan my live events for Stigma Free Society. And I have a lot of fun doing that and typing those out. So. Yeah, that's pretty much my routine these days. And it's good to have a routine, honestly. I'm really encouraging my students to do that too. Take your recess break, take your lunch break, take a workout break in the middle of the day, why not? 
because um, at work, I wouldn't have been able to do that. At work, I usually go for a walk outside or sometimes I'll sit outside on my lunch break, at least for half of it. So why not take advantage and slow down during this time and have a workout in the middle of the day? Why not? Um, tomorrow, I'm really excited to tune in for Fantasna and her yoga. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. And uh, she's doing yoga on live tomorrow. So I'm really excited for that. And I'm going to participate myself. So thank you. Really excited for that live. Do you feel closer to neighbors or not? Has that changed? Um, I kind of see them sitting outside. We'll wave at each other. I'll be, uh, I washed my car the other week and I was waving at them too. Um, <laughs> so not necessarily. I'm in a town complex, but not necessarily have been all that close with my neighbors. I feel like if I did before have a good relationship, then that would have been great. So, oh, we have somebody else tomorrow. Sorry. Tomorrow is Andrea. I am so sorry. Um, and she will be on here and she's fantastic. I'm so glad she reached out to me to be part of this project. So um, we're at 30 minutes here. So I'm going to let you all go and enjoy the rest of your day. And look forward to talking to you again next week with pencil and paper. And let's draw and do some fun things together. All right. Take care. Have a good one.